So now some of the more advanced topics. Flame stability. So stability basically means either flashback, you know, you don't have a stable flame at the burner. Flame goes inside the nozzle, inside the burner. Okay. So if it enters the burner tube and it doesn't get quenched, so that's a safety hazard. So we design flame arresters if you are using a premit flame system. Okay. So that's one side, one end flashback going inside. Other is, you know, if you start increasing the, so the, let's say that low velocity the flame is attached. And then as you increase the, you know, flow velocity, then flame will lift off and its lift of height will increase until the flame blows out. Okay. <coughs> Sometime it can also happen that the flame starts oscillating. One time it will blow out. We can cause also <coughs> this by you know decreasing the equivalence ratio. Okay. Then flame response to stretch. Okay. No stretch. This this uh, topic has developed last 15, 20 years. Okay, all these real flames. There is a stretch effect. Okay, there are. <coughs> okay, there are three sources of the stretch. One is aerodynamic straining. Those are the velocity gradients in the flow which cause flame stretch. Basically, the flame stretch means. The flame surface area, okay, changes due to some other effects. Okay, so there's a formula for the flame stretch. It's like basically, uh, if area is a, then d a d t times one over a. Okay, you can find find lot of literature on flame stretch. So I'll just show a couple of results. Okay. So the premix flame characteristics like flame speed, flame structure, emissions from this flame, and especially instability, they are all strongly influenced by the stretch effects. There is some discussion on in Turn's book on flame re flame response to stretch is not you probably won't find in these books, but there are a lot of you know general papers. Okay. So flashback first, okay. So as we discussed, flashback is a serious safety hazard, okay. So it refers to the situation when the flame enters and propagates upstream in the burner tube, you know, without getting quenched. So obviously, as we discussed, as the mixture velocity is reduced, or let's say you turn it, uh, turn the flow off. So you have to be careful; it can cause is flashback, okay? Because you cannot ex suddenly extinguish the flame. Okay, so it can flashback during that, you know, transient time. So in gas appliances, it can potentially ignite a large volume of gas. You know, basically it can propagate upstream to the, you know, to the gas tank, at the source of gas. So the fl flame arresters are designed specifically for reducing the, for quenching the flame propagation. Because these wire mesh, they reduce the flame temperature by absorbing heat. And reducing the temperature below the ignition temperature. Okay. So the conditions for flashback, okay, again are in terms of equivalence ratio for a given flame. So basically it's related to the flame speed, okay, and quenching. Okay. So the important parameters for flashback are very similar to those, okay, for affecting the quenching. So fuel, fee, fuel type, mixture velocities, okay, so related closely to the quenching behavior, okay. So slightly richer mixture provides the highest propensity for flashback okay. because the 
flame speed is the highest. Okay, near phi equal to one. Slightly rich means like equivalence ratio about 1.05. Okay, 1.1 in that range. I think this last sentence there may be a typo. I will double check that because the flame speeds are much higher for hydrogen mixtures. Okay, so I will double check that part. So flashback, there is a lot of information in these two books. Okay. And there are papers on flashback. Other part of stability is <coughs> lift off and blow out. Of course, lift off in general doesn't always mean that it's uncontrolled combustion. So I should correct this. Under some conditions, yeah, you'll get uncontrolled combustion. But you can have a steady flame which is lifted. Okay. So it depends strongly on flame properties, Pro flame properties again like flame speed, and of course the flow properties become important here. Okay. So you say both okay, chemical kinetics and flow effects, you know, are important for the blowout. Okay. So again, this is a repetition at low velocities, you get a conical flame at the burner tip. Okay. So the flame edge lies close to the burner tip. So as you increase the flow velocity, right, the coal angle will decrease, the flame will become longer and longer. And, okay, and then it will go to a lifted position. If you increase the velocity further, it can blow out. Okay. Yeah. For low mixture velocity, it means uh, that velocity must be near to that burning velocity, the flow velocity. The flow velocity must be near to the burning velocity, not lower than that. <laughs> right, it's not lower than the burning velocity. It can be higher. Yeah. Yeah, here is, you know, like relative velocity. When it is lower range, flame is attached. Okay. So when the flame is attached near the burner, the flow velocity, <coughs> so there is a stabilization region. So when this flame is very close to the burner, there are a lot of theories, you know, how the flame is stabilized near the burners. So we won't go into, you know, those theories, okay. So the flame flow velocity is low, but the flame speed is also low because of the, okay, loss of heat and radical species to the rim. So the rim wall is like a sink for the flame. Okay. So there is a heat loss and also radical species are diffusing to the wall, uh, to the rim. And so that is, they decrease the flame speed. Okay. So the flame speed is low and the flow velocity is also low near the rim. Okay. So the net thing is, net effect is the flame remains close to the burner. Okay. However, with further increases V in V, okay, causes the dilution of the mixture with ambient fluent because flame is a little bit lifted. So increase the velocity, okay, the mixture becomes leaner there. So okay. So the flame gets lifted. That's the net result. Okay. And as the flame is lifted, heat loss will go down, right, to the wall, to the burner rim. The loss of radical species will go down also. Okay. So flame is lifted now and it can be sustained at you know, lifted position. Okay. Again, the flame, laminar flame speed, okay, balances some kind of flow velocity where the flame is stabilized, you know, in the lifted position. In Lewis and Van Ralby book, this is one of the classic books, there is a lot of discussion on this flame stabilization when it is lifted. Okay, next one. So, the flashback and lift off, 
Okay. They are reported in different ways. For engineering applications, they use okay, plots like this. Okay. So what you have here is the gas flow rate, okay, or the energy input rate, okay, which is the same thing. You know, you have flow rate. You can multiply with the heating value of the fuel, so you get the energy input rate. Okay. <coughs> and then here you have, okay, percentage of fuel. Okay. So percentage of fuel. Again, in mole fractions, it's not percentage of fuel, it's the primary, primary, air, primary, air primary air percentage, sorry. Okay. So primary air percentage means this is, okay, lean condition here, okay. So in terms of primary air, you can get the flammability limits, okay. So these are the flammability limits. So here, okay. So you go above this, you get the lifted flame zone, and then the flame can blow out. Okay. <coughs> and then when you have less air, okay, so yellow tip zone means you know you, you produce soot when you have fuel rich mixture. Okay. So this is like where you have less soot, and this is the design area in terms of the energy input rate in the primary air, primary air, okay. So this is for methane or natural gas, I should say, okay. So this is the flashback region, okay. Lean, so this is the lean part, this is the rich part, okay, flashback, okay. So it varies with, you know, the input. Okay. So basically, you are increasing the fuel flow rate here in this, along this axis. This is a similar graph, just to indicate, you know, you get wider limits, wider flammability limits, okay. This is, okay, this is a complicated gas. This is called manufactured gas, which is like a coal gas, okay. So flashback is wider, okay. The lifted flame is zone is also in, at a higher, this, percentage of air, whereas this one is lower, okay. So you have a wider operating range for this particular gas, okay. So the main point is for different gases, different fuels, a different range, you know, operating range. So again, to show that, you know, flashback and lift off, those are very important phenomena for, you know, real burners. No, no, this is a slightly different topic. Okay. Sir, yeah. Could you explain about the yellow tip region? Yeah, I think you can, this is in Tan's book. Okay. So, yellow tip region is, you have very, you know, low amount of, you know, air. So when you have rich mixture, okay, you get more soot. Okay. So soot, you know, starts from the tip region. Okay. So that's the yellow tip region. And there'll be more soot after that. Okay. So that means above this, there'll be much less soot. You go below this line, there'll be a lot of soot. But this is now a totally different topic, okay. There's a lot of work on this, where premix flames get thermodiffusive instability. So thermodiffusive instability deals with the non-unity Lewis number, okay. So actually for most fuel air mixture, for methane air mixture, Lewis number is close to one, okay. That means the thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity are about same, okay. But most of the other fuels, it is, you know, not 
close to 1. So for example, if you have hydrogen air mixture, so you see the effect. When equivalence ratio is 3, then the Lewis number is greater than 1. Okay. When the equivalence ratio is lean, okay, it is less than 1. Okay. How is the, so thermal diffusivity is very clear, right? You can calculate the thermal diffusivity of the mixture. Okay. What about the mass diffusivity? Okay. When you have fuel layer mixture, they use the, if it is lean mixture, okay, they use the diffusivity of fuel with respect to air. Okay. Because that's the leaner component. Okay. So the flame will be, you'll get more sustained burning if the diffusion is higher okay, of fuel. But if it is a rich mixture, then oxygen is less, right, more fuel. So then they use the diffusivity of oxygen, okay, in calculating the Lewis number, okay. So that's why, you know, we are saying for rich mixtures, okay, the Lewis number for hydrogen is greater than because it's based on the diffusivity of oxygen, okay. For lean, it's the diffusivity of hydrogen. Now hydrogen is very diffusive, so the diffusivity is much higher, so the Lewis number is less than one. <coughs> so what you see here, okay, the stretch rate. Now this is a new parameter we did not discuss so far. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, then you have a problem, right? <laughs> okay. So I guess uh, stoichiometric it was like almost one then, right? Because less than one, one case, and then greater than one in the other case. So if it is stoichiometric, it will be close to one. Okay. <coughs> so. That's the, yeah, I'll discuss in a minute. It's a flame speed, but different flame speed. Yes, if the flame speed we have discussed so far, that's like a one-dimensional flame, you know, it's, okay. The real flames may be curved, you know, cylindrical or spherical, okay. Or there may be flow gradients when the flame, the flame is propagating. So far we consider <coughs> uniform flow, right? But real cases you have non-uniform flow, so there are velocity gradients in the flow. So if there are velocity gradients in the flow, but the flame is curved, that cause stretch effects, okay? So that can increase or decrease the flame speed, okay? For example, if you have a spherical flame, okay, then there is a radius of curvature, right, for the flame, okay? So that is related to the stretch effect, okay? What is the strain rate of the flame? Same thing in a counterflow flame, okay? When you have two jets, you can define a strain rate, okay? That's the velocity gradient in the flow, okay? So it's very easy to estimate that you have the jet's velocity, right? And then your distance between the nozzle, okay? So you take the jet velocity divided by the distance between the nozzle, that gives you a strain rate. The, you know, value of the velocity, velocity gradient. So that strain rate can change the flame speed, burning rate. So now we define the burning rate, okay, which is the flame speed, okay. So that strain rate can increase or decrease the flame speed, burning rate. Because what is burning rate? That's, the, you can also see burning rate in terms of flame speed times the density, right? Okay. So that's the rate at which fuel is burning, being consumed, okay. So the, the stretch depends upon the Lewis number. If the Lewis number is less than one for lean hydrogen flames, then as you increase the stretch, the flame speed increases, okay? And these experiments were done 
the simulation as well, as especially the experiments, they were done for diffusion flames. Oh, sorry, diffusion flames, the spherical flames, okay? So like you burn the mixture in the center, then a spherical flame will, you know, <coughs> uh, will propagate out spherically, and then they measure the flame speed. So this is in this review paper, Law and Sun. Okay, so that's the effect of the stretch. So stretch is the velocity gradient, okay? <coughs> or the curvature of the flame. So this is for hydrogen air. Now if you have lean, okay, propane air mixture, the effect is opposite, okay? Because for propane air mixture, when it is lean, then the Lewis number is okay, greater than one. <coughs> because the diffusivity <laughs> of propane is okay, high, much higher than compared to the thermal diffusivity. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, uh, much lower than the thermal diffusivity. Okay. So it's greater than one. So when the Lewis number is greater than one, flame speed decreases. Okay. So it's a competition between the thermal effect, which tries to increase the flame speed. What is the thermal effect, the heat conduction from the hot zone to the mixture? Okay. Whereas the mass diffusion effect is opposite because mass is coming from cold region to the hot region, right? So diffusion of the fuel, <coughs> okay? Diffusion in other for, for the fuel air mixture, okay? So it's the competition between thermal effect and the mass diffusion effect. So as you increase the stretch rate, okay, for the lean mixture of propane, the flame speed increases, whereas for propane, it decreases. Okay, you note that the values are different. You know, this is like, and by the way, the, these values for the zero stretch rate, <coughs> those are the what you call the unstretched laminar flame speeds. Those are the ones we discussed so far. Okay. Either velocity gradient or is related to the stretch, you know, the curvature of the flame. Okay. If it is a counterflow flame, then flame is almost in you know, a flat, then you use the velocity gradient. Okay. In more practical flows, you'll have both effects. You'll have the velocity gradient as well as you know the curvature of the flame. Because flames will be curved. Okay. So then the stretches become like the summation of the two effects. Then there are some other effects also. So for lean hydrogen flames, flame speed increases with stretch. Lean propane flames, it decreases with stretch. Okay, okay this is the effect of stretch okay, on extinction. Okay. So you see the tip of the methane flame. So this is the premix. This is a partially premix flame. So you have two reaction zones. But what we are studying today is, you know, the premix flame part, right? So you don't see any extinction of this flame near the tip for methane. Lewis number is almost close to one. Okay. For rich propane flames, the Lewis number is less than one. So this is. Uh, you know, what we discussed here. For rich flame, the Lewis number is, okay. Flame, what is the Lewis number for rich propane? It is less than one. This is greater than one, okay. So it's less than one. So these are some more details, so, you know, I won't discuss these. Okay, so here the burning rate decreases with stretch, and that's what we are shown here on this one. Okay, burning rate decreases with stretch. So the tip opens. That means there is a local extinction. So this is the effect of the strain rate 
and the Lewis number effect, which causes this flame to flare for the flame to extinguish near the tip. So these are some flame images from C.K. Law's work. So this is what I was talking. They, they ignite the mixture <coughs> in the center, and then we time the flame, okay, propagates out, okay. So these are at different times. I don't know if you can read the values of time, okay. <coughs> Anyway, these are at different times. Oh, no, alpha, let me try to remember. So these are first of all, okay. So the mixture conditions are for hydrogen, Lewis number is less than one. Yeah, so equivalence ratio is 0 0.8. Okay. So lean flames. So for lean flames, hydrogen, okay. Lewis number is one, uh, less than one for propane it is greater than one, okay. So what happens? So here the flame speed will increase with stretch, okay. The effect is, okay, you get these, okay, okay, you see this, the surface is not smooth, you get these wrinkles on the flame surface, okay because of the flame instability which is related to the stretch okay, and Lewis number. So you see the wrinkles, so they develop as the flame propagates. Now if you increase the amount of propane, so this is pure hydrogen, this is pure propane. Okay. So in between you have different you know, blends, 25% okay, propane, 75% hydrogen. So here you see, you don't see those wrinkles, okay. So this is also part of the flame instability. This is related to what is called thermal diffusive, the Lewis number. Thermal diffusion and then the mass diffusion, okay. For hydrogen propane blends. And you can see here when you have 75% or well let's say 50%, the wrinkles appear right away for hydrogen, but they appear much later when you have propane. So that's the effect of propane. It makes the flame more stable. Okay. So stability here means, you know, once some wrinkles start appearing, they, you know, that they appear in more, more on the flame region, okay. They start increasing, okay. So that's the instability. So this is again directly related to the effect of stretch, okay, and Lewis number on the flame speed. I think this may be the last one here. But this one we already discussed, the lift off and blow out. Okay, so these slides are not exactly in the same organized order, but it's showing, you know, the lift off as you add CO2. The flame is here, then it's lifted. When it is lifted, it has this triple flame structure, and then it blows out at 40 percent. Okay. Okay, so this set is finished here. Now I'll show you some results of the CFD for the CFD work. So yesterday we discussed all these, you know, equations for reacting flows, right? So for cylindrical geometry, okay, you have R and Z. So Z is the axial direction. R is the radius, okay? So you can write a generalized governing equation, okay, for continuity, momentum, species, and energy, okay? So you have the rate of change of quantity, then rate of change due to convection, okay? 
and then rate of change due to diffusion. These extra terms come because of the coordinate system. These appear in the cylindrical coordinates. In Cartesian, they won't appear. The source term is different for different. Uh, so phi is for mixture mass, you know, conservation phi is one. Okay. So for mixture mass, okay, this will be just d rho dt, right? The continuity or the mass conservation equation. This will be, and this will be just dr ddr of rho v, ddz of rho u, and this will be zero. Okay, all of this will be zero, basically. Okay, that's for the continuity equation. Same way you can write the axial momentum equation, then phi will be equal to u. Okay, and then this coefficient will be viscosity. Okay. Then you can write the radial momentum equation. Species, this will be diffusivity. Okay. And phi is then <coughs> the mass fraction of species. An energy equation is written in terms of H, so phi will be equal to H then. H is the sensible enthalpy. Okay. And you can look at the source term. This is what we discussed yesterday. Okay. So if you look at the slides, it's exactly same source term you have, okay, for the enthalpy equation. So we were solving these equations, all of these, you know, numerically. So I'll show some results. We are done for different fuels. So this is for methane fuel, and this is, uh, you know, this work is about 10 years old, so we are using this. GRI 2.11 mechanism. Okay. But we also included the Knox mechanism for this. So it had 48 species and 277 reactions. Okay. And then some more information about. So this is for a jet flame. These are just few of the numerical details. Okay, so it was finite volume discretization, which is third order accurate both in space and time. Okay, for certain equations, some equations it was not third order; it was between first and second order. Okay, but overall the code was third order accurate in space and time. So we solved the unsteady equations. Okay. I usually show these details, you know, in my numerical class because they are okay, one of the topics we study is, you know, linear algebra, like how do you solve a system of algebraic equation? Because the idea is, you know, you have differential equations and then you use some finite volume or finite difference approximation, right, for CFD. Then you get a system of, a large system of algebraic equations to solve. Okay. So, here we had 46,000 points, and you have, you know, like 48 uh, species plus temperature, momentum, so the total 53 unknowns. Okay. So the number of algebraic equations you are solving are like 2.4 million. This I just show you now that we can solve very large system of equations these days on the computer. Okay. <coughs> so this is not directly relevant to what we are discussing. This is just some numerical procedure. This is some validation. First we have to validate the results. So here we are showing for different grids, so grid independent study. Okay, so I'll skip this part. So this is a, very, this was a very interesting study. So I to give you some background information. So here, what is shown, this is the axis of symmetry, okay? So only half of the domain is shown, zero to 10 millimeter here, and then this is the axis of symmetry. So 10 millimeter on this side also, which is not shown. So here you have the fuel jet, separated by a thin you know, wall, and then you have the air jet, okay? So we first compute the this jet mixing 
without any combustion. Okay, so it's a fuel jet flowing into air. So there will be a shear layer somewhere here. So we have fuel and air mixing. Okay. And then we numerically ignite the mixture somewhere downstream here. Okay. So you put an ignition source here, and then this will develop into a flame. Okay. Since the fuel is coming from this side, the flame then will propagate upstream. And eventually, you'll get a you know, diffusion flame near the burner tip. Okay. So we were able to capture all the transient effects because when it is propagating, it has a triple flame structure. So we wanted to study the triple flame structure and then because then we have the flame speed. So now you can see how the flame is propagating into this mixture uh, through the video. So this is 0% hydrogen. So the fuel was all methane. And then we did another case where you have 50% by volume hydrogen and 50% methane. So you'll see that the flame will propagate much faster okay, when you add hydrogen. So now I have to switch to another file. Hopefully, I can show both of them simultaneously. Oops. So let me show one at a time first, then I'll try see. OK. So I'll go for slow, slide by slide, the image by image, so that you can see. This is going fast. Okay, so you can see how the flame is propagating. Okay. So you see in this uh, jet flow, okay, so there's a large equivalence ratio variation because this inside is all fuel, right? This side is air, okay? So this black line represents the stoichiometric conditions. Okay. So let me go back. So this black line is the stoichiometric conditions. Okay. Mixture is stoichiometric. So now you can see in a slow motion how the flame develops from ignition. So now the flame is propagating. And it follows the stoichiometric mixture fraction line. Okay, because the edge of the flame, there's a premixed reaction zone, premixed flame at the edge. Okay, so this red one is the premixed flame. So it propagates upstream, and then it goes through stabilization, and then finally you get this methane air, methane flame. Okay. So let me see if I can put this also. Oops, wrong. Okay, so right now it's only one at a time. So this is has 50% hydrogen by volume. So first you'll see it will go very fast. Okay. Now when it gets stabilized, it's a diffusion flame. Okay. Because the fuel is inside and air is outside. Okay. Now this will discuss, you know, next two days, you know, the diffusion flames. So you see the flame length is much shorter for hydrogen flames compared to methane. Now this is not exactly hydrogen. This is 50% hydrogen and 50% methane. So 
So the flame length is reduced when you add hydrogen. So let me see if I can show this both. <coughs> oh, this. Look at this. So you see it goes much faster. Okay. And when the flame becomes a stable flame, you can see the flame length. So CFD, you know, combustion CFD is very powerful these days to study a lot of fundamental phenomena as well as of course get you know practical results. Because here we calculated flame speed triple flame structure, then effect of stretch, all, you know, a lot of different phenomena. And then effect of adding hydrogen. Okay. Basically, you know, solving those equations we discussed, you know, last two days, especially yesterday. Okay, I think I'll stop here.